Hello there and welcome back to the Signal 1.5 training series. We're going to be talking about step variation and step time in this video. So I've already got a scene set up here and it's pretty straightforward. I've just got a cube and a cone and a sphere and each one is being driven by a signal tag. The first one is being driven by random noise. This one's being driven by a sine wave and this one's being driven by the new BPM feature. Make sure you check out the BPM video for all the details on that. And then I've got a tracer object that's just tracing the motion of these, but I also have a signal tag on there that's moving it on X forever, which is a great feature that we have it set to additive, so that will just keep traveling that direction forever, which essentially is giving us like a heart beat monitor. So let's go ahead and hit play and you can see exactly what I mean. You see these are just moving up and down and what that's what's being driven, but you can actually see the time displayed here as they get stretched out. So let's go ahead and start talking about our step variation and our step time. So let's start off by turning off the cone and the cube and let's actually just jump up here and take a look at just the cube. So this is traveling giving us a nice clean uh, random noise up and down. And of course, you can always add variation in there. Let's click on that tag and we can jump into the variation. We could say that this should be going higher. So I've given that a lot more variation. We could say it should be a, doing a quicker or slower noise. Let's slow this down to like 0.5. You can see it's doing the noise pattern, but very slowly over time. Or we could jump that up to four and now it's a much faster variation. And of course, we have bias. So a low bias means it's going to be, it's gonna be, be fairly uh, uniform and stay smoothly to the middle. And if we start cranking the bias, it's going to be more inclined to get to the peaks and the troughs of the motion. So we'll leave that back and kind of the default I had. And let's start talking about our step variation and our step time. So under any tab, but specifically right now in noise, we're going to twirl down advanced. And now we've got step variation and step time. Let's start with step variation. We're going to turn that on and we need to feed it a value. So Right now, this is traveling up to 555 and down to negative 555. So let's give this a fairly large number. I'm gonna feed it 200. So what's happening now is it's doing the same motion effectively. It's following those same peaks and troughs, but it's only updating when it's traveled far enough to have snapped to this, the next increment, the next step of this number. So if I did a smaller number, let's say 50, it's going to start looking relatively smooth. Why don't we even turn off that tweet for a second? You can see that it's a little bit hard edge. So maybe that's not quite enough to see it. Let's jump this up to 100. So we got 100 here. You can actually see it jumping up and down, following those same distances, but it's following it very closely. And as we increase this to higher and higher numbers, let's do 300. It's really only hitting when it's hitting those like big variations in number. So once again, this is following the original pattern. It's just doing it based on that amount. So that's step variation. It's a way of kind of quantizing the value. We'll turn that off and let's jump into step time. Step time is very similar, except every single signal tag and every single tab is being fed time. As the timeline progresses, it moves forward at that rate. But we can actually step the time we're feeding it in addition to the step variation. So let's turn on step time. I'm gonna just turn that on and you're going to immediately see this jumping and it's only updating once a second right now. So one time every second, it's jumping and feeding the next updated time. We'll see this a little better if I jump this to five frames. Every five frames now, it's jumping to its new position. So it's as if it's being fed time zero, 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 then five, 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 then 10, 10, 10. So it's jumping and repeating the frames, the time that's being fed. So now you can see the variation making that travel up and down. Those two things can be used in conjunction. And you see there is a slight stylistic difference on them where this one is jumping to a new value every five frames, no matter how much has changed. If we turn on this variation, it's now jumping not based on time, but based on how much it's moved. So you see, we, we're not getting these even increments that we were on the other one. So that is it on this noise. Let's take a look at it. The same idea on this cone, sine wave. And this one we'll just recap really quick because it's a similar idea and then we'll do a fancier version. So here's our step variation. I'm gonna jump it up to 100. And now every time it travels 100 units, you see it is updating and we can set that to larger or smaller numbers. So here's 300 and you can see it's doing steps very regularly. That's actually lining up quite nicely, yeah. Uh, but now let's go and grab step time instead. So now I want this to update every five frames. So let's turn on step time. And now every five frames is jumping to its new value no matter what it is. We can say every 10 frames, it's jumping to its new value. Every 15 frames. 
And right now, this is looping every 45. So, yeah, keep in mind, if we, if we go above 45 or even set that to 45, I think it's just going to be a straight line because it's always at the exact same point at every 45. So keep that kind of stuff in mind. But uh, this is, you know, these two different things are really great for feeding in all this uh, to step it. And it's actually a really great thing to use to control to get more of a stop motion feel on things. If we were to drop this value down to maybe like three, it's going to start getting a little bit more jittery. So you get these jumps from one position to another. And uh, I'm not going to go into it in this video, but you could actually drive this value. You could keyframe this value or drive this value with another signal tag to make that frame go up or down. So there could be random variation like every frame or every two frames, every three frames that could be varying between them. So that can make that even more powerful. Let's jump to our last one though. We've got our signal BPM driving this, all very similar. If we click on the BPM tab, you can see where it's laid out. And you can see if I turn on our highlight, that's traveling along that line, showing us what BPM it's showing. So now we've got this variation traveling. But why don't we go and make this even more complicated? Because we've, we've already seen what step variation, step time does here. But let's talk about it in the global sense. So I'm actually going to go and add a new tab. I'm going to go to the base, and I'm going to add a sine wave as well. And I want that to be set to 555, just like the other ones. So now there's a sine wave adding on top of the BPM, which is pretty nifty by itself. And let's go and add the noise. Let's get all of them hanging out. We have this noise, and I want that to also jump to 555. Let's give it a little extra variation and speed it up so it's pretty much identical to the other one I had. So now we have a sine wave kind of doing these big up and down movements. And then we've got the, all these sharp angles are being created by our BPM happening. And then we've got this little bit of random noise layered on top of it as well, which is just going to shake that up a little bit. So to add the variation, you have to do it to each of these tabs. But we also added it into the final output tab. So in the final output tab, you can twirl down step variation and step time. And we can now feed it in on a global way. So let's start out with step variation. I'm going to go ahead and give it a big number. Let's start out with 300. And now it's a step variation based on that exact same motion, except it's applying to all of them. Same concept. And we can also do step time, turn that on, set it to five, and now it's updating every five frames to be feeding out that final output to get these to these final solid numbers. So really fun way, additional feature that you can add in the signal, and every single tab has been modified to be able to use this quantized variation. Now I just want to add in one last final thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete out that and delete, I'm just deleting out those extra tabs I just created. So now we just got our BPM, and I'm even gonna turn off the step variation, and I'm gonna make sure all the step is off in all of them. Turn that one off. Cool. So we got all of them back on again. We're seeing all of this. Now, where step, a particular place where step variation is very, very useful is actually when you're animating color. And it's something I wanted for a long time. And this is why step variation was added. I'm going to go ahead and add a new signal tag to the sweep. And in the sweep, keep in mind, I've changed the color from, on, from off to on. So we're seeing this color. So now we have a set color we're feeding. We also do it via material, but this is quicker. I'm going to go ahead and drop that on the signal tag. So now... There's a brand new signal tag, and it's driving the color of our lines. That's all this is doing. So why don't I go ahead and create a random noise on there? So now, uh, to do kind of the best variation of color we can, right now we're feeding it black. But I'm going to say that we're going to feed it only positive values anywhere up to white. So what this now means is this can randomly be any color. And you can see we're getting lots of nice in-betweens and... Uh, you can see where the two, the R and the G and the B are moving up and down. Now, something that's pretty useful is if you crank up the bias a little bit, we're going to get to more extreme colors to get a little bit, uh, you can see where it's peaking a lot more. So now we're getting all this variation, but you see it's constantly moving. It's constantly kind of, uh, you know, it's constantly in motion. So color is super useful to do step time or step variation. So let's start out with step time. I'm going to turn that on, and now this color is randomly going to change every 30 frames. Now, keep in mind, this is still based off that speed. No, those are going in between. So we could actually go and slow this down or speed it up. Let's go change this to five frames. And now you can see we're getting a more of a blink. But you can see where there's a little bit of a transition between them. And if we make our speed even slower, I'm going to set our speed to 0.5, you now see that the colors are changing. But you can see where it's kind of morphing from yellow to blue to red kind of slowly over time. Where if instead we crank the speed up to something pretty high, I'll jump at the five. Every time it does, uh, and whatever, that could be six. Every time this jumps to like another uh, increment of time, another step of time. This is looking like a completely new color. And now keep in mind, well, I'll talk about that in a second. I'm going to, and now you see it's going super crazy. 
Uh, let's slow that back down again. And now let's go to step variation, which of course is very similar, except now we have to set a value variation. And this is just pretty much how much color variation is there. So right now there's no color variation, but I'm gonna say when the color has changed at least that much, like at least 10%, then go ahead and snap. So that's actually not very much. I'm gonna crank this up to at least half. So now it's not based on time, it's based on it's changed enough to justify the change, or at least that much color has changed to make the new one pop in. Uh, typic, I mean, I, this, is, this is super useful, but typically I'm using the step time. I just like the way that one works a little bit better to uh, be feeding in these different values. Um, let's see. I thought there was something else I was going to mention, but I think that's pretty, that pretty much covers it. Uh, keep in mind this will continue to work with loop if we put a loop point in there. Uh, it will work with the new time remap feature. Make sure you check out the uh, new features video to see how the time remap works. And let's see, anything else to mention there? Nope, uh, color, uh, the color variation works really well, but this is step variation on everything. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.